In this video, I'm going to show you how to implement a timer countdown in React.js. Now, implementing this is pretty simple, but it's frequently asked during front-end machine code round interviews. And that's because there are many different ways to implement this, but it's pretty important to know the most efficient way to implement something like this. So I'm going to show you the most simple and efficient way to build this so that if you ever stumble upon a question like this during your machine code round interview, then it won't take up too much of your time to implement something like this. So before we get started, I'll just show you a quick demo of the project. So as you can see on the screen, I have this timer countdown that's changing every one second. Now this one over here represents the number of days, 23 represents the total number of hours, 59 represents the total number of minutes and this 23 is nothing but the number of seconds. So this is what we are going to build. So without any further ado, let's get right on with it. Now I have this very basic setup created by using npx create react app. So I just deleted a few files that were unnecessary and in the app.js file, all I'm doing is I'm importing this timer from this timer folder that's present over here within the src. Within the SRC, I have this timer folder that includes a .index.js file and I'm importing it to our app.js file. Now in our app.js file, all I'm doing is I'm just rendering out this timer component. So all our main logic is going to go within the index.js file present within the timer folder. And apart from that, in the app.js file, I have a class name of app over here and I have added a simple style which just centers out everything on the screen. So as you can see on the screen now, I have this timer text that's being rendered out and it's centered in the screen. So now I'm going to go to my index.js file and I'm going to start implementing the timer countdown. Now before we do that, the first thing we need to do is the timer that we show in the screen, the entire value of that needs to be passed in the form of milliseconds. And then we are going to break down the number of milliseconds and format it to display it in the days, hours, minutes and seconds format. Now to do that, all I'm going to do first is I'm going to send the duration prop to this timer component over here. And let's say I want to pass two days. So we need to pass this in the form of milliseconds. For that, all we need to do is since I need to pass two days, I'm going to write two multiplied by the total number of hours, which is 24 multiplied by 60, which is the total number of minutes multiplied by 60, which is the total number of seconds. And then this entire thing is going to get multiplied with nothing but 1000 to convert it into milliseconds. So now this entire two day duration is being passed to this timer component in the form of milliseconds. So I'm going to go to my index.js file and I'm going to destructure out the duration. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to code use state and use effect. And before we proceed writing the logic, all I'm going to do first of all is I'm just going to create a variable named time. I'm going to say const time at time this will be a state and i'm going to initialize it with the duration all right and let's say in the beginning i just render out the time over here now what we need to do is when the component mounts i want to call the use effect and within this use effect i want to run some logic now this use effect is going to have a dependency and we are going to pass time in the empty array over here so now every time the time changes, this use effect is going to run. Now in the timer countdown, we are changing the time after every second. So we need to make sure that this time is changed every second. And when that happens, this use effect gets run. Now to update this time every second, we need to pass it within a set timeout. So all I'm going to write first of all is I'm going to say set timeout. I'm going to pass the callback. And then after each second, after each second, this set timeout is going to be called. So what I'm going to do within this set timeout is I'm going to say set time and I'm going to write time minus 1000. So now since I've written time minus 1000, this time is going to be updated. And every time this time state gets updated, this use effect checks that the time is getting updated. So it runs this use effect all over again. And then after each second, the set timeout is called and the time is decremented by the value of one second. And since the duration is in the form of milliseconds, so we are decreasing the value of the time by 1000 milliseconds, which is nothing but one second. So now if I just save this and I go to my browser, you're going to see, and if I refresh, you're going to see it's going to decrement by 1000. But this is not how we want our end output to be. We need to format this entire value so that we can get this number in the form of days, hours, minutes, and seconds. So now to do that, I'm first of all going to remove this time from over here. And I'm going to call a function over here. Let's say get formatted time. All right. Now I'm going to write this function over here first. Let's make it an arrow function. 
Now in this function, I'm just going to format the time state variable that we have declared. So now within the get formatted time, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to write let total seconds and then I'm going to say parse int and I'm going to write math dot floor and all I'm going to say is I'm going to write time divided by 1000 and remember the time over here is nothing but in milliseconds now just uh, so that you guys don't get confused what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pass time over here and I'm going to write this over here as milliseconds I'm going to copy this and replace it with time so that you guys don't get confused so this is nothing but the time itself and what we are doing first is we are, we are trying to take out the total number of seconds the total number of seconds is nothing but the current time which is in milliseconds divided by 1000 so this is going to give us the total seconds in the seconds format and then i'm going to write total minutes and i'm going to do almost something similar i'm going to say parse end math dot floor and then over here i'm just going to write total seconds divided by 60 because obviously minutes is nothing but the total number of seconds which is present divided by 60 pretty basic math and then i'm going to write total hours it's going to be nothing but parse int math dot floor and then i'm going to say total minutes divided by 60 again so obviously ours is the minutes divided by 60 and then lastly i'm just going to say that days equals to parse int i'm going to write math dot floor similar as above and to get the number of days it's obviously going to be total hours divided by 24 now this is going to give us the total number of days now lastly all we need to do is this is going to give us the total number of seconds minutes hours and days now the total seconds minutes hours and all is is still going to be a pretty huge number but what we need to do is once we have mathematically gotten the current total seconds minutes hours and days all we need to do is we need to convert the seconds minutes and hours in a way that they get represented in the timer countdown format for example the total seconds need to be represented in a format in a way where it counts down from 60 goes to 59 58 57 once it reaches to zero it starts back from 59 again so that's the way we need to render out the seconds same goes for the minutes and hours for hours we need to do it from 24 23 and so on for minutes we need to do it from 60 59 and so on for minutes as well we need to do it in the form of 59 58 57 and so on so if you notice there's a pattern that once the 60 seconds starts and it goes down to zero it repeats and starts from 60 seconds again while the total minutes decrements so let's say if the total minutes was 59 and the seconds goes down to zero then after that one minute is over that second starts from 59 again and the minute gets decremented to 58 so once you have the total seconds minutes and hours it becomes pretty easy to get that format to get that repeating format so to do that all i'm going to do is i'm going to say let seconds equals to parse int and then i'm going to say total seconds and I'm going to do a modulus operation with nothing but 60. So this means divide the total seconds by 60 and just get the remaining part. So this is going to allow the seconds to always loop through in the sense that whenever it, whenever it starts from 60, goes down to 59, 58 and it goes, down to, goes back down to 0, it's again going to start from 60, 59, 58 and so on. So this is going to allow you to loop through that entire 60 second duration over and over again until the time doesn't reach 0. Now we'll do the same for the minutes. We're going to write minutes equals to parse int. I'm going to say total minutes. And then I'm going to do a modulus operation with 60. Alright. Then I'm going to do the same for hours. I'm going to say hours equals to parse int. And then I'm going to say total hours. And I'm going to do a modulus operation with 24. So this is going to allow the seconds, minutes, and hours to represent themselves properly in the 60, 60, and 24 format every time the second ends or the minute ends or the hour is changed and lastly after we get the proper seconds minutes and hours we just need to return it in a proper formatted way so i'm just going to say days write a dollar sign over here then i'm going to say hours and then i'm going to say minutes minutes and then lastly nothing but the number of seconds Alright, I'm going to save this 
and over here we are calling the get formatted time and we are passing the time itself we don't need to pass it necessarily but just so that you you guys don't get confused i just renamed this to milliseconds and passed it over here so now i'm just going to save this and this should pretty much work if i go to my browser and i just refresh my screen you can see it starts from two days and then it counts down it goes becomes one day and 23 hours 59 minutes and 52 seconds so now this keeps on decrementing and then once this goes down to zero it's again gonna it's again gonna start from 59 and this time is going to go down to 58 so that calculation that we performed over here helps us achieve that so now just to show you that this works what i can do is um over here in the app js i can also write let's pass a total of one day i pass one day and i save and i go to my browser and i save it and you can see this starts from one day then it becomes zero and we have 23 hours and 59 minutes and 55 seconds pending and it's going to count down from that so this is pretty much all we need to do to implement a timer countdown as you could see it was pretty simple to implement and there were just a few mathematical calculations we needed to be aware of now this is the most simplest way that i found to implement something like this so if you ever face this question during a machine code round interview make sure to use this method and quickly implement the solution so if you enjoyed the video don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll be coming out with more such videos regarding machine code round interviews so if you're interested stay subscribed and stay tuned for more